I think Shabir is right that we're in danger of uh, beginning to become repetitive. And so as to escape that, I want to shift gears in my closing statement and share a little bit about what salvation means to me personally. I myself was not raised in a Christian home or even a church-going family, though it was a good and, and loving home. But when I became a teenager, I began to ask the big questions in life. Why am I here? Where am I going? What is the meaning of my existence? And in the search for answers, I began to attend a large church in our local town. But instead of answers, all I found there was a sort of social country club where the dues were a dollar a week in the offering plate. And these other high school students who claimed to be Christians lived for their real God the rest of the week, which was popularity. And this really bothered me because here externally I was living a very moral and upright life and yet I felt so empty inside. I believed that God existed, but God wasn't a living reality in my life. And I thought these people just must be a bunch of hypocrites. They're all pretending to be Christians, but they must be just as empty as I am because they're not even living as good a life as I am and I, I'm, I don't know anything about God. And so I began to become very alienated and bitter toward these people in the institutional church. And soon this attitude spread toward everybody. I thought everybody's a fake. They're all holding up plastic masks to the world. And the real person is cowering down inside, afraid to come out and be real. And so I began to become very bitter and angry toward other people for their phoniness and hypocrisy. And I threw myself into my studies because I hated people so much I didn't want to be with them and I said I don't need them. Uh, I don't need those stupid bipeds. Uh, I'll just immerse myself in my own studies and work. And at the same time as I, I did this, I was on my way toward becoming a very, very alienated young man. And yet in moments of introspection and honesty, I realized that deep down inside I really did want to love and to be loved by others. And I realized at that moment I was just as much a fake as they were because here I was pretending not to need people when in fact I knew I really did. And so that anger turned in on myself for my own phoniness. And I don't know if you understand what this is like, but this kind of inner anger just eats away at your insides day after day, making every day misery, another day to get through. Well, one day I was feeling particularly crummy and I walked into my high school German class and sat down behind a girl who's one of these types, you know, that is always so happy, it just makes you sick. And she turned around, I tapped her on the shoulder and she turned around and I said to her, Sandy, what are you always so happy about for anyway? And she said, well, Bill, it's because I'm saved. And I said, you're what? And she said, I know Jesus Christ is my personal savior. And I said, well, I go to church. And she said, well, that's not enough, Bill. You've got to have him really living in your, in, in your heart. And I said, well, what would he want to do a thing like that for? And she said, because he loves you, Bill. And that just hit me like a ton of bricks. Here I was, so filled with anger and hate. And she said, there was someone who really loved me. And who was it but the God of the universe? And that thought just staggered me to think that the God of the universe could love me. Bill Craig, that worm down there on that speck of dust called planet Earth. And that ignited a fire in me. I began to read the New Testament from cover to cover. And as I did so, I was captivated by the person of Jesus of Nazareth. This man's teachings had a wisdom about them that I had never encountered before. And his life had an authenticity about it that wasn't characteristic of those people who claimed to be his followers in that local church I was going to. And I realized then I couldn't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Well, to make a long story short, after about six months of the most intense soul searching, I just came to the end of my rope and I just cried out to God one night. And as I cried out all the anger and the bitterness that was in me, I felt this tremendous infusion of joy like a balloon being blown up and blown up until it was ready to burst. And I rushed outside. It was a warm September evening and I could see the Milky Way from horizon to horizon. And I looked up at the stars and I thought, God, I've come to know God. And that moment changed my whole life because I had realized during that time that if this message of God's love in Christ were really the truth, then I could do nothing less than devote my entire life to sharing it with others. And that's basically why I participate in a debate like this tonight, because the gospel is such good news that God loves you in your sin as an unbeliever 
and he sent his son to die for you. They're giving away New Testaments or selling them, I, I'm not sure, at the back of this auditorium after the debate. I'd encourage you to do what I did. Get a New Testament. Begin to read about the life and teachings of Jesus and ask yourself if this couldn't be the truth. I guarantee you it can change your life just as it changed mine.